Hey everyone, welcome to my two-part mini-series on creating a plugin or game feature that enables you to interact with objects in any project that you want. So, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is create a new plugin. It's going to be of type game feature, content only, and we'll call this interactable objects. Okay, and we're going to set the current state to loaded and the initial state to loaded as well. Now the first thing we need to create is an actor component. Um, this is the component we're going to put on our player to scan for interactable objects in front of the player or like you know if you're looking at something you want to be able to like highlight the object if it's interactable and if you hit the interact key it should be able to interact with the object. So let's call this interactable object scanner. It's the best name I could come up with. Um, okay, and we're gonna create a new function. We'll call this like get line trace vectors. We're gonna have two outputs. Um, start vector and end. All right, I also added a new input for max range, and we're essentially gonna multiply that scalar times the forward vector and store that as a variable as well as the camera's location. And then all we have to do is return the camera's location as the start, and the end is going to be just be the camera's location plus the forward vector. With this function created, we can quickly test it by calling it here, get, get line trace vectors. We'll give this a range of like 1,000, and just debug line. Pass those in here, get a color of red. A duration of I just that's fine. Cool. To test it, all we gotta do is go to our plugin data asset, add a new action to add components, and simply add the scanner component to our third person character and Hit play. As you can see, it's drawing the line just like we wanted it to, right in front of the camera. Now yours might not work, uh, and that's because you have to open up your level blueprint and call these two um, functions here. This this function on begin play will load the plugin, and when you end, you want to deactivate the plugin. Otherwise, you'll get um, like some weird errors, and yeah, you won't be able to edit your plugin correctly. Before we continue adding to our scanner, we want to create an interface for our interactable objects. So I'll call it I interactable objects. Okay, and it'll have three functions interact, on focus, and on focus end. So obviously, this is what gets called when you want to interact with the object, when you're looking at the object, and when you look away from the object. We also need a way to attach this sort of like interface to objects. So let's go back to our components and create a new actor component and we'll call this BP interact, uh, interactable object behavior component because this is a component that will essentially determine how the object will be interacted with or like its behavior. So I'm bad at naming, so if you don't like that name, find a better one, uh, let me know in the comments, because, yeah, <laughs> this is probably not a great name, but we'll just go with it for now. And let's go ahead and implement these functions. For now, I just made it so that this behavior will just, like, print out what each function is doing. Okay, so we have a interactable object behavior component, right? But we need to find a way to attach it to our objects. So to do that, let's create a new folder for game feature objects. And this will hold all the different objects that our plugins can interact with. So for this specific one, we need to create a new folder for interactable objects because yeah, you might have other plugins that need their own special type of objects, right? Um, let's create an actor and we'll call this interactable object base. All right, and this is just gonna do nothing pretty much, but it will allow us to add our 
interactable object behavior components to our objects in the actual world. So this rule is just going to add this default behavior to this default object class, but we can get more specific and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. As an example, I'm going to just create a child of this base class and we'll call it interactable cube. Okay. And this is just going to have a cube. Okay. Now, if we drag this into the world, before we can interact with it though, we need to go back to our object scanner. And instead of just drawing debug lines, we need to actually perform line traces. So let's do multi line trace by channel. Oops. Do line trace by channel. All right. Drag the start and end. We'll keep the trace channel to visibility because we only want to hit stuff that we can see, obviously. We're going to loop through all these. Okay. And then we want to break the hit up, hit the actor, then get component by interface because we might have different implementations of our behaviors, right? Of our interactable object behavior components. So let's just call it interactable, oops, interactable objects. Get the first one because we'll assume there'll only be one. Okay. And then from there, we can call focus. Okay. And let's just test this out. Now, if we run it, it should work. As you can see on the top left corner, we're seeing it print out focusing when we look at this cube. And note that it does not do that when we look at the other cubes because it knows that this is an interactable object. Before we move on, let's just go back to our interface here. And let's rename this to I interactable object behavior. I think maybe that will line up better with um, just like how we're doing things and components and stuff like that. Uh, because now in the scanner, we can, like it kind of reads a little better, right? Let's get, get the component um, interactable object behavior, right? Because we're getting a behavior and then we're actually going to like call its functions. And plus you're not supposed to name interfaces with like a plural name, but that's beside the point. That was just a typo, I think. Now, if we want to highlight our objects, let's go to our um behavior or default behavior and delete these two things next we'll want to get the owner then get component get components plural by class and we're going to try to get just a mesh component all right so we'll basically just get all the meshes in our actor and for each of these we'll want to set custom render Set render custom depth, sorry, to some value like that. And actually, we can collapse this into a function. We'll call it maybe like set, set, uh, or maybe toggle outline. So that works. This function is going to have an input outline is outline enabled. All right, and then on focus, we want to set this to true. And on focus end, we'll want to set that to false. And in this function, get is outline enabled, wire that up. And that should be that. Now, of course, this isn't going to highlight our objects just yet because this render custom depth thing isn't really going to do anything until we add a post-process effect that actually highlights our objects. So to do that, I recommend you simply um, go to the link below. Um, there's this really great article explaining how you can create this post-process effect. Um, download the sample project. Once you have it open, go to the materials folder, select all of these, right click, asset actions, migrate, hit OK. If we go back to our project, you'll see that I have this materials folder with all the materials we just ported over. So to actually use them, we need to create a post process volume. Now, if you search for materials, you'll want to add a new material and simply drag this one over. All right. But you also need to enable infinite extent. That way it affects the whole world. Now, if we hit play and look at our object, you see that it highlights our object. 
However, if you look away, it won't unhighlight it. And that's because in our scanner, we are never calling the onFocus end. To fix that, we need to create a new variable. Let's call this um, focused objects, and it's going to be of type interactable object um, behavior, that interface we made, and it's going to be uh, an array of those. All right. And then each time we hit an interactable object, we're going to want to add it to our list before calling on focus on it. Before we can add it to our list, we need to cast it to our interactable object behavior interface. And simply drag the output of that to here before we call and focus on it. All right, I just cleaned it up a little bit so that we actually call and focus on this um, interact object behavior. So now that we have a list of currently focused objects, we need to also clear it every frame and call on focus end on all of them. Let's make a new function. We'll call it like, and or clear, let's just call it clear focused objects. All right, and here we're gonna loop through all of these. Okay, with this function created, we can just simply call it here and test it out. Now, when we look at it, it highlights. When we look away, it unhighlights. Perfect. All right, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in part two because in part two, I'll show you how you can actually interact with objects and also show you how you can add more specific objects that have their own behaviors.